Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about the latest book I just finished. It is Disturbing the Universe by Freeman Dyson. Firstly, it's cool because the guy's first name is Freeman, and that rocks. Freeman Dyson is a famous 20th century mathematician and scientist. He's still alive. He's in his 80s. Um, he's still with us. And the most famous thing I think you could say he is known for it's a thought experiment he came up with called a Dyson Sphere. The concept is that the planet Earth is 93 million miles from the Sun. So, if you take some of the major gas giants in our system, break them down into their base components, that you would be able to build a shell around the Sun, completely encompassing it, that was 93 million miles in radius, so 186 million miles in diameter. Because it's at that the same distance from the Sun as Earth is, all of the internal surface would be habitable. So you would have a huge amount of space. Now, of course, it's a problem with gravity because essentially you wouldn't have any. Um, but I'm figuring if you get to the point in time where this is something that you can think, consider a viable research project, you probably have control of gravity at that point. So it isn't much of an issue. But one of the other things you can do is you spin this giant shell. Now, the highest point of gravity would be at the equator. That you're spinning it in this direction, so the equator would be the highest gravity. So you spin it fast enough so the center of the, of the, of the uh, sphere is, say, at one and a half Gs. And the poles, because they are essentially spinning, free spinning at the hubs, they would be at zero. But that's okay because you can use those as getting in and out of the, uh, out of the sphere you know, with spacecraft, so having zero G at the ends isn't an issue. But that leaves two really big bands on either side of the equator, which are habitable, which are 1 G, or roughly 1 G, what we, the gravity we have here. So you have these huge amounts of, of land mass, and you can put oceans, and lakes, and rivers, and you can put one-to-one -one scale maps of everything on the planet on Mars, the whole shebang, and still have millions of times more surface area than the Earth does. It's a cool experiment, a good, cool thought experiment, and I believe that it's been used by a number of different science fiction authors. I know it was used in at least one um, Star Trek episode, and Larry Niven's Ringworld is related to Dyson's concept for a Dyson sphere. But Dyson himself grew up in the early part of the 20th century, and around 15, he had a revelation of, of a supreme compassion for his fellow man. And he tried to reconcile that with the real world, and he couldn't. He worked for the Bomber Command during World War II and used his math skills to help come up with statistical analysis to help figure out what was and was not effective for the Allies in bombing Germany. So his moral compass was severely harmed by this. And he spent the rest of his life, I think, and I, I have no reason to believe he hasn't is still pondering it, trying to reconcile that moral quandary from the war with a pacifistic compassion of view of the universe. But he also had an opportunity to work with some very famous researchers, one of them being um, Richard Feynman, one of the geniuses of the 20th century. Um, he worked on uh, the Manhattan Project, and he, he was one of the greatest minds we've ever had. He essentially redesigned quantum mechanics because he didn't like the way it was presented to him. So he spent five years in redoing the entire thing and then finding a better way of doing it. And Dyson got to work with him, and that's really cool. Dyson also worked with a number of other famous researchers over time, and this book covers some of those people's lives, which is great. Um, he also goes to, so touches briefly on some of his personal life. And at the last part of the book, about the last... 20% of the book is thought experiments that he used in his research and he presents to um, the reader, kind of the speculative science, view, if, if you will. So overall, if you have an interest in Dyson as a researcher and as a man, the 20th century researchers that he had contact with, and he worked with some of the early space program stuff, he worked with some of the early nuclear power um, researchers, he got to work with uh, Feynman, he had some, he had contact with some really wonderful people, and he, you get to see a perspective of, of them from a different point of view because it's Dyson talking about them, and I really enjoyed that. So, 
If you're into science and you enjoy a good memoir, I recommend this book.